Hey guys, welcome back to Planet Mithril Paints, and today we have the ferocious Uruk General Lurts himself. That's right, it may be Halloween, but I definitely said Lurts, not Lurch. And today we'll be showing you how to bring some life to this truly ferocious monster of an orc on the tabletop. As always, the model was mold line cleaned and trimmed of any flash. It's a metal model, so please make sure you get rid of all these areas. And be careful when you're mold line cleaning to not wear away any of the detail, particularly around the face and the armor plating. The model was then affixed to the base using super glue. Once this was dry, the base was then covered in fine modeling sand, whereupon it was finally sprayed with Citadel Chaos Black Spray to get us going. We'll be showing you how to create a really authentic, updated look to the Urukai skin, as well as how we can create that synonymous look to the Urukai armor, and through various browns and textures, bring some life to the tunics to really tie them in with the Urukai Scout video we had released a little while ago. This video should hopefully give you alerts you'd be proud to have leading your Urukai legions. And if you want to see how we painted our Urukai Scouts and normal Urukai warriors to tie all the army together, the videos will be at the end of the video, so please stick around for that and share that out. But in the meantime, we really hope you guys enjoyed today's tutorial. Sit back, brush is ready, get your alerts on, and enjoy the video. Base colours. We're going to start with a three-part mix of Doomball Brown, Corn Red and Abaddon Black to tone down the hue of the skin and apply this over the face, the arms and then the exposed skin on alerts. Now we're going to base coat all the metals on alerts with a mix of Iron Warriors, Warplot Bronze and Abaddon Black. Then we want to apply this in a few thinner layers across the larger surface areas like the shield and sword to maintain a smooth coverage. Time for our third three part mix. This mix is going to be made up of Fondia Brown, Rhinox Hide, again toned down with some Abaddon Black to tie in with the other hues we're using currently, and apply this to the main body of the cloth. Ah, a two part mix. Hurrah! We're going to base coat the rest of the inner cloth now with a mix of Dryer Bark and Abaddon Black. This will just create some subtle differentiation to the main body of cloth. Now the quiver, straps, gloves and hair were base coated with a mix of storm vermin fur and Abaddon black, about a 50-50 split of the two. Uruk skin. We're now going to apply a thorough wash to all the flesh areas with some slightly diluted Agrax Earth Shade. Then we're going to relay it over with the previous base coat mix, leaving the Agrax Earth Shade showing in the deepest recesses of all the musculature and flesh detail. Now we're going to start adding Tuscal Fur to the previous base coat mix and apply this as a layer, leaving the previous layer and wash showing in the recesses to create some natural shading around his Uruki skin. Now 
Increase the amount of tusk or fur in the mix for the next few highlight stages, at each stage pushing the highlights closer and further towards the edges and most prominent facial features, as well as the edges and most prominent areas of all the muscular to detail. Finally going to apply a final extreme edge highlight with a mix of tusk or fur and deep kin flesh. Once you're happy with how the skin's looking, we can apply a very light blaze of droopy violet. We're going to use our usual way of painting eyes for alerts here, starting with Abaddon Black to fill in the deepest recesses of the eyes. Followed by two dots of pallid witch flesh either side to finish off the overall effect. The teeth at this stage were also very carefully picked out with your shafty bone. We're going to use a two part layering stage of Ulthran Grey to start off with to paint in the main body of the white hand on his face. followed by a very quick highlight with white scar just to finish off and make the hand really pop over his brown face. Armour and Metal We're going to apply a two part wash now with a mix of Agrax Earth Shade and Athonian Camo Shade just to really get some scouty grime all over his metalwork and plate armour. We're going to tone down all the armour uniformly with a mix of null oil, then down with a little bit of Lamy and medium. Not quite as much as the previous mix, but enough that it will bring the armour down to a really nice, dirty, grubby look. Now we go very carefully and very painstakingly at this stage with a mix of Iron Hand Steel and Stormhose Silver, apply a fine edge highlight to the edges of all the metalwork and silver on Lurts. And tight controlled brush strokes to make sure this goes exactly where you need it to go and really creates that nice sense of sharpness and brutality synonymous with Urukai. We're going to increase the amount of Stormhost Silver in the mix and just apply a pinpoint dot highlight to the vertices and all the corners of all the armour plating. Just for that final glint of Uruk Malice. And finally we'll tie all these stages all together with just a very light glaze of Nam Oil, again just to tie together the layer and highlighting stages. main tunic and leathers. We're going to wash the main tunic and all the other leathers on alerts now with Agrax Earthshade. Oh no, they've evolved to a four part mix, send help immediately! Now we're going to start adding some scrag brown to the previous Thondir, Rhinox and Abaddon Black mix and apply this as a layer to the main body of the tunic once your previous wash has dried.
Continue adding scribe brown in small increments for the next few layering stages until you are happy to move on to the highlight stage. We are using scribe brown here instead of a brown or a pastel-y uh, bone colour as the scribe brown helps to bring up the natural tone of the tunic that we are looking for and doesn't desaturate the base colours of the brown that we have got so far. Look at me using all the painty words. Once you're happy with how your tunic's looking, we can apply an edge highlight now with a 2 to 1 mix of scrag brown and deathclaw brown, just focusing on the uppermost folds of all the cloth areas and just where the light will be catching most prominently. We're going to start layering up the other leathers now by adding some Bane Blade Brown to the previous Dry Up Bark Abaddon Black Mix and just follow the same mentality as we did for the main body of the tunic. Increase the amount of Bane Blade Brown for the next few layering stages until your mix is approximately one part Bane Blade Brown, one part the previous Dry Bark Abaddon mix. For the final highlight stage, we're going to add approximately 33%, about a third, of a shafty bone to the previous layering stage mix and apply this as a final highlight to the other leathers. Once you're happy with how this all looks, we're going to apply a very targeted glaze with some super thin down Agrac Thirst Shade just to tie all these stages together. Yeah, it's looking very uruki now. Black cloth and details. Black cloth, straps, hair and gloves were given a wash now with Nuln Oil. Once it has dried, we apply the layer with a 3 to 1 ratio mix of Storm Vermin Fur and Abaddon Black, leaving the null oil showing in the recesses to create some nice depth and definition across these, uh, across these areas. At this point we also focus on separating out the fingers and separating out the main strands of hair to create some detail there. As you're happy with your layering stages, the final stage will supply an edge highlight with pure storm vermin fur. as we have done with the other stages, a very light targeted glaze of some thin down Nalm oil just to tie all these areas together. He's looking super lurzy now. Finishing details. The hilt, shield strap and arrows were base coated with dry bark. These were then highlighted very carefully with Gawthor Brown. The 
very carefully pick out the arrow fletchings with Steel Legion Dread. This was followed with a targeted highlight with Ushabti Bone. And a final glaze with that thin down Agrax Earthshade we used earlier for the tunic. Basing. Now our Lurts is suitably Lurtsed up, we can move on to the basing now. We're going to start with our usual method of applying a base coat dry brush with dry bark. Followed with a lighter dry brush now with Gawthor Brown. And a super light dry brush of Pallid Witch Flesh just over the top. The base was then decorated with clump foliage grass tufts and dead leaves to best befit the woodland terrain he's traversing and the rim of the base was finally painted with a solid line of dry bark. And there we have it, our fearsome Urukai general Lurts, ready to hunt down the fellowship and find the halflings and return them to his Lord Saruman in Isengard. A truly ferocious general to see on the tabletop. <laughs>